Hello, my name's Adam, and this is Rusty. <coughs> and welcome to the channel. And in this video, we're going to look at how to take our drum breaker balls, our snare cymbals and electronics, onto an aeroplane. Now, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and press the like button, not for me, but for the doggy. It helps us so much because it allows that YouTube algorithm to promote us to new audiences. Anyway, let's get into this video. Let me welcome you to my friend, Haristo Ducho. Are you excited to hear from Haristo? We're so excited. My name is Haristo. Everyone gets my name wrong because they're not used to names that start with HR. So H-R-I-S-T-O, Christo. I play drums and percussion, but I, I like playing drums whereas percussion is something that just, I've always done. Tune percussion, all that stuff, like, you know. And I've known you now for, I think, nine years. Has it been that long? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're an incredibly gifted musician. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, we've, we've had some fun times together. What what have we not done in, in the UK? We've done the O2, we've done Wembley Arena. Yeah, it's good times, you know. One of the things I wanted to chat about today is I have never had experience traveling uh, onto an airplane with breakables and with any type of drum gear. Like it's easy to travel on, a, on an airplane with say your backpack or with a carry on bit of piece of yep. luggage, but then trying to transport your breakables and you've got like a snare drum, the cymbals and the electronics. You su you're suddenly like, how the heck do I even do this? What's the additional costs? It comes a little bit scary. Perhaps say if I was going to go into Europe for a show, how would that work? Many options there, and I think I've probably tried them all, and it's about personal preference and budget as well. You can take a fair amount of stuff as hand luggage. I've taken snare drums on as hand luggage, especially where you are allowed a backpack and something else, so you know, or like a wheelie and a snare drum. I've, and in the wheelie, there's been like an SPDS and electronics, you know, like a couple of triggers, some sticks obviously come a pair of pants. So that, that would be for like one-off trips. It works, but the downside, security can be a massive pain. The moment there's a, a, a whole lot of cables going through the scanner, you have to take everything out and they actually get to see all your underwear and everything Away. else. And sometimes <laughs> they're like, well, what is this? And you're like, it's a drum key. Somewhere they can say, oh no, I've had someone in India wanted to take my drum key because they're like, that's a tool. You could like dismantle the airplane with this. I was like, you're not taking my drum key. You would have to check in the symbols because of the size of them. Usually, unless you get someone really gracious and you've got like a soft bag with symbols that are probably no bigger than 20 inch. I remember you were asking about whether the symbols should be hard case, soft case, and I said, it depends how much you care. So you could do a soft bag. It is a risk. I'm a big fan of the SKB cases. They've got a lifetime warranty. If you don't want to do um, the hand luggage situation, uh, you could get a big pelly and check a whole lot of stuff. Try and keep it, well, not try. You have to keep it under 30 kilos. Is it 30, 32? Different airlines have different allowances, but you definitely can't go beyond that. And within that, just uh, you can shove your stuff in s small cases, which kind of works can be a bit of a mess or you can get a pelly and get it custom foamed which is what I've got here and I'm mm. um, happy to show you around. I'd love to see it. I'm really curious. I actually would want to get something made e even though I don't really travel. <laughs> I just like gear. <laughs> to be fair man it's, it's just it's nice to keep just everything nice for keeping everything in one spot even if you're going through town for some reason and I know where you live in Surrey everyone drives but us peasants here in London, <laughs> we have to take public transport. It's nice to have it in one case than trying to like grab all the handles and like, you know, even though it's a lot heavier. This is basically, um, I'm gonna flip the camera now. Okay. Here is the pelly case with the foam. Got the snare here, basically a 14 inch cut out. There's a little bit of room here for the strainer. I didn't say, but this is like kind of my personal case and I haven't used it for a long time. I just use the church one, which is bigger, in mm. which I've got a 14 by eight Black Beauty. Whereas this is a, a Gretsch, it's walnut, it's a very nice drum. And then um, here, what they've done is there's a little hole where the head of the pedal fits. The reason why I like the other case is that I don't need to dismantle my pedal. I've had to take off the, um, the beater of the pedal, but not only that, I've also got to like loosen the chain for the pedal to actually fit. Cause, so here is, here is the, the kick pedal kind of folded. And as you can see, there's a little foam kind of here in the way, which is why you need to loosen it. I usually put a bit of foam here as well, 
because I don't want it touching yeah. uh, the drum just in case it scratches something. That tells you why I love the other case because there's basically like, it's even more comp comp uh, compartment, something like that. Yes, compartmentalized. <laughs> compartmentalized, something like that. Mental is in that word, that's why it's a mental word to say. That would be it. Not only do I have my um, kick as well, so as you can see, I've got my four way power extension there, and then you know, then I chuck all the loose like USB cable, power cable for the SPD, foot switch, which I put here on the side of the kick pedal again, utilizing every single gap. The clamp clamp is very important for the SPD, you know, without it. Um, it could be pretty stuck. You could, you could always uh, hold it in your hand for the hog kick. <laughs> and then try and play with your feet only. So this is kind of the bottom layer. And then the way it was originally built, there's this massive tray that goes on top. And there I have my SPD interface. And that was a compartment where I had four triggers. And that worked really great, still does. Uh, so going back to the other case that I've, uh, I use, I've only been using it for about a couple of years. So prior to that, I've been using this case for maybe seven years, but for the last four years, I've used it without the tray because I no longer needed the interface. That's the other thing with an interface. It's great to be able to travel with it, but it's even better if you have it racked with a DI and all you need is just some XLRs to plug into it. It's so much more professional. And you do want to kind of try and give up, give that vibe when you, when you go to places, you know, local crew will respect you more. But also, you just don't know what jack to jacks or what XLRs or what DIs you're gonna be provided with. So Sorry, I didn't realize that that you take um, your own um, interface and DI with you to 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 a venue or to another country as well, just to make things easier. That also makes a lot of sense. So that's I've actually got. What else I've got you? I've actually got a little example of what it would look like right now. This would be a little track rig. So it's only like a three unit thing. So there's an interface, some XLRs into a DI, into an eight-way DI. So I even provide the XLRs, you know, on a loom. So it just makes it that tiny bit neater. I don't know if I would fly with this case. It's a, one of those Gator ones, which is not bad, but you could, you could actually get a flight case, which is better, but then a lot heavier. Yeah. This thing, it's got a couple of lids and you know, there we go, traveling with it. So again, it's not essential, but yeah, it just makes when you arrive at in a place you've never been to, or, or perhaps even in a foreign country, you, uh, you're confident that you've um, sussed exactly, any yeah. possible problems that will happen on your end. I like with, with your drums, but then with like electronics and your tracks, because that is, that for me was always more of the headache because the drums, you hit them and they're always gonna make a noise. It's always the electronics. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that goes wrong. How I then ended up traveling is I got rid of completely of the tray. I would put some foam here just for a bit of extra protection. And I'd put the SPDS on top. And then I used to fit some random bits here and there. But then I encountered the problem of even when you go through security with your stick bag inside your luggage, they see like brushes, drum keys, maybe a couple of tools. So what I can do now is I can go, ah, oh, here is my stick bag and essentially close it. Mm. So, so that would be this setup. And essentially, the other case is the same. The case is bigger, so bulkier, but actually it's one of the newer models, which is lighter. So yeah, so that's um, that. Let me flip the camera again, because why not? And then uh, your Peli case just acts, basically as just another piece of luggage that either yourself or whoever you're working for pays for additionally. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You try and base it on that, whether, whether they pay for it or whether you go, hey, I'm gonna need my fee to be X amount because I need to travel with this. But the more, it's one of those things, like the more you take, the more you're gonna pay for it, but the easier your life's gonna be. And then I suppose like the, the last thing is, say you are the drummer for a big artist, either in the UK or in America, and then you are almost employed by the artist to be their drummer. Am I right in, in saying that these bands will almost still have a set of gear specifically for that project that will get shipped in advance of a tour or a gig? Yeah, so that's my understanding. I've never quite been part of that to really be able to, to tell you for, for a fact. It's what I'm told. I've not experienced it myself, but to give you an example of people who have done it, let's take the biggest eyes you can think of, Coldplay. They have a whole truck's worth of stuff 
and then the equivalent in another truck so as like one show is setting up the second one is already traveling to the next arena to set up for the next day so they have kind of two traveling from place to place but uh, if you're a slightly smaller band even still you might prefer to ship most of this stuff from the from the from the uk so obviously we're talking about trucks that's obviously possible when it comes to doing Europe. Now when it comes to US, you're gonna have to hire there. When it comes to most of the backline side of things and potentially some set stuff, you can actually fly that as cargo. And I actually did do it once, but it was very random just because uh, it was something within India, which meant we had to drop off. They came, the great thing is they came and pick it up from the venue that you were last at. So you, did, you didn't need to bring it to the airport. I think uh, you just, put it on a pallet and then they do what they need to do they take it i think they deliver it to the venue for you wherever you fl flew to they deliver it there but the problem is it's obviously quite a bit later than your flight it's still on the same flight or at least for us it was on the same flight it arrived later than us and we knew that it's not worth it for one-offs but it's if you're going to be doing a tour in another continent where you can't drive to uh, but you need to take a load of stuff and it, it might probably not worth it for you as an individual as a drummer but as a band it could be worth it as a project and you just do that and then once and then once you get to the country there you start using trucks and whatnot and do your thing now Sweet. who knows <laughs> someone's probably gonna watch this video and go what is he talking about <laughs> he's never done that and that's rubbish so you know um from my understanding talking to friends who've done it and having very minimal experience of it but some experience with it that's that's what people do thank you so much for chatting um, it's amazing and perhaps in a minute I'll FaceTime you because we're about to be kicked off the Zoom yep, call. Yeah, absolutely. Is that okay? Alright. Cool, thank you so much. In a bit. Bye. Speak to you soon. Bye.